Now from the Boston Museum of Science, SciTech Today on NECN. In SciTech Today, silver nanotechnology and your next shopping trip to the mall. What do they all have to do with each other? Tim Miller joins us live from the Museum of Science Boston to tell us. Hi, Tim. Hello. So you've got a teddy bear and a hair dryer with you. Tell us what they have to do with nanotechnology. Well, tomorrow the State Department of Environmental Protection is convening a workshop on the safe development of nanotechnology. And one of the scenarios that they're going to consider there uh, is the proliferation of products that contain silver nanoparticles. Recently, there have been a number of products, like just like the ones that you see arranged in front of me here, uh, that have emerged in the marketplace that do contain these tiny particles of silver we call silver nanoparticles. Why are those materials being put into consumer products? Well, that's a great question. Actually, silver has been known for centuries to have uh, anti bacterial and antimicrobial properties. That's where the tradition of using silver utensils and drinking out of uh, silver goblets comes from. And in fact, uh, it's been a sort of folk remedy for years to, that some people consume small quantities uh, of a silver solution known as a silver colloid for health purposes. Now, it turns out that consuming too much of that material can lead to a disease called argyria, which actually colors the skin blue. I think we have a photo uh, of this. This is a man from California who was a little bit too liberal in his consumption of this material. Wow. Wow, that's certainly concerning looking. What does this have to do with nanotechnology, Tim? Well, so in the last couple of years, scientists and engineers have found some tricky ways of uh, fabricating very, very tiny particles of silver, as I said, called nanoparticles. Uh, and we think that these particles will be a lot more effective in fighting and killing bacteria. And that could have um, some really great uh, consequences. The good news here is that we might be able to use that technology for uh, fighting infections in hospitals. There are a number of bacteria that have become very resistant to other forms of antibacterials like antibiotics uh, and these silver nanoparticles might be more effective in killing those bacteria. It sounds like there could really be a large benefit here from nanotechnology. There could uh, but there's also some concern. So the potential bad news is the emergence of these particles in what you might think of as the more frivolous products. Uh, some of the commercial products like the ones you see here. Children's toys like teddy bears are being impregnated with nanotechnology uh, or with these nanoparticles. A hair dryer that's spraying some of those silver nanoparticles particles into the hair, uh, a topical solution that is designed to be applied on the skin, or, or even athletic socks where the fabric is impregnated with these particles. So do we know what the unintended consequences could be of, of that exposure? We're not certain yet, but that's one of the concerns. So actually, the athletic socks are a really good example. Every time that you wash these socks in the washing machine, some of those particles are going to get washed out of the fabric and end up in the wastewater. Now, there's some concern that that might cause problems when that water gets to the waste treatment plant. And there's also some evidence now that silver nanoparticles can cause some problems in the development of aquatic organisms. I think we have a photo here uh, showing an experiment about the development of zebrafish embryos. So the embryos on the left there uh, are normal and healthy embryos. The ones on the right have been exposed to silver nanoparticles. And as you s can see, uh, they have a pretty serious developmental defect. Uh, tell us about uh, any concerns on the environmental impact and what the reaction has been from the Environmental Protection Agency. Well, so over the past couple of years, environmental groups have raised these concerns and pressured the federal EPA to try and regulate these products. Now, last year, the EPA ruled that uh, materials that were claiming to be antibiotics bacteria like these products had to pass muster as pesticides. One of the problems though is that the manufacturers of those products have simply removed that claim from their marketing materials but haven't substantially changed the composition of the product. Any activism on the state level? Well, so as I said, the State Department of Environmental Protection is uh, convening a workshop tomorrow about the safe development of uh, nanotechnology. And the effort there is to really just uh, make sure that everyone's on the same page with the labeling of these products and find out if there are any gaps in regulation that exist. So what's the bottom line for consumers here, Tim? Is it everything in moderation? <laughs> I think that's a pretty good bottom line. I think the take home message here is that with any new technology, there are some potentially great benefits. Uh, as I said, with this one, it might be very useful in fighting infection but we want to be really careful about how much of any material uh, we put into our bodies or out into the environment. And if people want more information about nanotechnology in consumer products, there's a website. It's www.nanotechproject.org. Tim Miller, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. And coming up, uh, you can join us every Wednesday night at 5.30 for SciTech Today and every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Tomorrow we'll be finding out what scientists are learning from the extinct Tasmanian tiger.